No, I'm amazed that, uh, that no one has accomplished the Grand Slam since 1969 when I did it, uh, because there's a lot of champions that have come and gone. In the 40 years since Rod Laver etched his name into history, the Australian Open has undergone a global revolution. Fans have flocked to Melbourne Park in record numbers to watch the Grand Slam of Asia Pacific, while worldwide audiences have surged year after year. There is no question that the Australian Open is on the, on the, on the front of everyone's minds, and, and, and also we see it in the playing group. If you have a look of over 500 players that come to the Australian Open from nearly every different country in the world, it's clear indication that this is truly a global event. And as the popularity of the competition grows, so too does the prize money. This year's male and female champions will each walk away with $2 million. And for the first time, the women's final will be played at night on the court named after the rock from Rockhampton. It's a, a crowning moment to my career is to have the, uh, the name sitting on top of the stadium here in Melbourne. And sometimes you think, is it, is it real? I've got to pinch myself. It's the very same court where, after the 2006 men's final, Roger Federer paid tribute to the legend he idolises. Last but not least, I would like to thank Rod Nettlinger for a <laughs> trophy. He admires some of the past champions, not just me. And I think that's just great for the game of tennis, that he feels that way, being the champion he is, to you know, display that emotion. Roger Federer arrived in Melbourne one short of Pete Sampras's all-time record of 14 Grand Slam singles titles. It was tough at the very beginning of my career when everybody said I could be a next Pete Sampras. That wasn't a whole lot of fun, you know, knowing that he was, I don't know, 14 Grand Slams away. Now being sort of part of such an elite uh, group is, 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 is fun, you know, because I... I love, you know, history and tennis, and I take this as a big, big compliment. Having lost his world number one ranking last year, Fedra is now the hunter, not the hunted. And is relieved the pressure is not weighing on his shoulders. I only have, you know, four titles to defend, not 12 maybe, you know, so that helps, you know, and that actually increases the pressure on other players. At the same time, I'm, you know, I'm disappointed I lost my number one ranking after so many years, but uh, I think it's going to be an interesting 2009. If I play my best, you know, I can still dominate all of those players, so it should be, it should be exciting. The man with the pressure on his racket strings is Novak Djokovic, the first Serb to win a Grand Slam singles title when he was crowned champion here last year. I never had the role of the defending champion in any Grand Slam, so it's a new experience, but uh, it's a challenge. You know, if I can overcome this challenge, that means that I'm really mentally uh, capable of, of uh, winning uh, the more major events in the future. With almost all of the top 100 men's players battling it out for this year's Australian title, the competition is as fierce as ever. Rafael Nadal arrived as the new world number one the Spaniard hoping to start the year with a bull run. Last year I had a good tournament here playing in semi-finals. I expect this year to uh, play well too. I know uh, all the matches are tough and I expect to play it after them. Andy Murray, the lion-hearted Scott, marched into Melbourne in white-hot form, desperate to leave as a brave heart, not a broken heart. Uh, I feel confident, yeah. Um, you know, but obviously last year I lost uh, Lost in the first round, so don't want to. Don't want that to happen again this year. Tipped as one of the pre-tournament favourites, a media scrum soon surrounded the Scot. When you do become a, a sort of contender for a slam, um, obviously the seeding and stuff helps with your draws and whatnot, and um, you know it gives you that little bit extra confidence. And if history is any guide, then expect a wild card, a bolter who blitzes through the field. In the women's draw, Serbia's Jelena Jankovic, who arrived at the tournament as world number one, was riding a wave of confidence. Everybody wants to be number one. It's a you know, great feeling. It's something that we'll always say in the history of women's tennis, so nobody can take that away from me. And I want to focus this year on uh, you know, the Grand Slams, the big tournaments, and trying to, to achieve my, my goals. Her compatriot, 
Anna Ivanovich, hoping to go one better than last year when she went down to Maria Sharapova in the final. I gained a lot of experience from that and um, it, was, it was just amazing the whole two weeks and I really hope I can, I can repeat that uh, what I did last year and, uh, and enjoy. Dominating the headlines on the eve of the tournament was news that Sharapova would not be travelling down under to defend her crown, unable to recover in time from surgery on an injured shoulder. Oh, it's a shame that Maria didn't come. I, I love to play her. She's one of my favourite opponents to play. With Sharapova out, the smart money was on Serena Williams to snare her fourth Australian title. I feel like I'm the best just because I'm not going to sit here and say anyone's better than me. Just, it wouldn't, that shouldn't be in tennis if I felt that way. Her sister Venus has fared less well here, but hopes this time around her stars will align. I don't feel any extra, you know, pressure or anything like that because I haven't been fortunate enough to win here, but... I just stay focused on what I need to do, and obviously I want to win every event. But does it happen? No, but I want it to. Australian fans were praying that the long drought since a local last one here would be broken. But local hero Leighton Hewitt failed to deliver. The Aussie battler going down in five sets to the red-hot Chilean Fernando Gonzalez in the first round. As one Aussie star fell, another was on the rise. 16-year-old boy wonder Bernard Tommy, the junior champion in 2008, serving up a spirited performance to become the youngest ever male winner of a match at the Australian Open. Melbourne has always had a love affair with sport. In January, it's not just the tennis that attracts record crowds. It's really turned into more than just uh, tennis. It's gone beyond that, and, and now it's also about entertainment. And that's what the fans are telling us, that they want to come out and see that as well. Beyond the baseline, Melbourne Park is a buzzing hive of activity day and night. This year's expanded program boasting bars and cafes, DJs and a star-studded lineup of bands playing more than 60 concerts over the two-week festival. The off-court highlight was inside the world-renowned Spiegel tent, where crowds were wowed by theatrics and acrobatics.